my name is Kim and this is Expedition Through Pages. This is the start of reading vlog 2 for Tales from Two Trails. It actually starts quite a while after the end of the last vlog, which now I can't remember when I even ended that. I think it was a couple of weeks ago because today is Saturday the 19th of February. And the reason I've had such a big gap is because I went on holiday and I tried to vlog while I was there, but I tried to vlog off my phone and the footage was so bad and so shaky and the sound was terrible that I was like, Do you know what, I'm not going to subject people to this. So um, I just ended up scrapping it all, but that's okay, it's fine, I'll update you with how things have gone. So I think I left off still reading Firmament by Simon Clark, and I finished this and I really liked it, I ended up giving it five stars. If you didn't see that reading vlog, basically what this is, is a very kind of beginner's introduction to the physics of the atmosphere and well like it says here the hidden science of weather climate change and the air that surrounds us and that basically is exactly what it says well actually with the added part that it covers the history of the science as well within the field of atmospheric physics and I absolutely loved it I thought that Simon did a really good job of explaining very clearly very concisely I really liked that he was creative with coming up with ways to try and explain it to people without a physics background, like different physical concepts and stuff like that. I like the way he explained things in ways I hadn't heard them being explained before and yeah I really really enjoyed it and I thought it was I thought it was excellent so if you have any interest in atmospheric science if you want to know kind of the physics behind climate change and all that stuff then I would say that this is a really really good place to start I really enjoyed it so yeah I gave this one five stars which was amazing because this is the first book that I finished for Tales from Two Trails and this covers my first step on the trail which was to read a non-fiction learning book so then my next step was to read a stem book which I have actually already read and finished, and that was Finding Wonders by Jeanette, uh, Finding Wonders by Janine Atkins. And this is, well, I thought it was non-fiction, but actually I think it's more fiction, so it's like historical fiction, I guess. In this book, it's a book written aimed at children, I think middle grade kind of age, where it tells the three different biographies of three different scientists, female scientists. Um, she focuses a lot on when they were children and then very kind of briefly at the end of each section goes into their adulthood and stuff as well. It's written in verse, which at first threw me because literally I have no clue how to read books written in verse. And I did try and experiment with how I was reading it a little bit, but in the end I just read it as a book, so. I don't know how you're supposed to read in verse. If anyone has any tips, then let me know. Having said that I read it like as a book though, it, I did find it did have a rhythm to it. So maybe you are just supposed to read it as a book, I don't know. But the first story I felt flowed better than the other two stories, um, just for my personal preference. The first one was following Maria Merian, who documented the lives of caterpillars and kind of the process of them turning into butterflies. <laughs> the second one focused on Mary Anning who was like a fossil finder and she used to sell fossils in the UK. I think Maria uh, Marion was from Germany and then the last story followed Mariah Mitchell from the USA who was an astronomer and discovered a comet. And yeah on Goodreads it is filed under non-fiction and I guess because it is kind of like their biographies but then in the author's note at the end um, Janine Atkins said that it, she did as much research as she could but she wanted to talk about the girls lives and most of the historical documents only talk about the actual kind of big event of their life which made them famous in science and she wanted to, I guess it to be more inspiring for young children and write it in a way that they can actually connect with them as people so she invented some stuff but she did a lot of research so she, you could tell reading it that she had done research about the societies they were living in and about the kind of social events that were going on at the time and the way people acted and the entertainments they had and you could tell loads and loads of research went into it but at the end of the day she did invent stuff to build a story and yeah I really really loved how she did that because I felt like it, they did feel real like the characters felt real you could get a sense of the societies they were living in and I really really liked that but what I would say is in Maria Merian's story when she's older she moves to Amsterdam and one of her daughters marries a guy from Amsterdam who trades in sugar from Suriname and she ends up moving 
to Suriname for a time so she can go and study the animals and stuff out there. And Janine Atkins mentions that Maria and her other daughter, I think, they go and stay on the plantation there because that's the connection. And then she goes off and studies the wildlife there and everything like that. But she never mentions the fact that there were people in slavery working on the plantations or anything like that. And she never, it's just never mentioned. And I didn't really understand why, because although it wasn't the focus of the book, I do think it's important to at least mention like, yes, Maria went and did this stuff and she went to see all these amazing creatures in this other place and she documented them and it furthered science. Like, but she still did that off the back of other people's suffering. And I know it's aimed at children, but I feel like it's even more important to just mention that because the three stories are really about women overcoming social barriers in a lot of cases. <laughs> kind of, although she does mention that in the ages where the three girls were doing scientific work actually it was easier for women to work in science at that time it was only when science became very institutionalized then it kind of put barriers up to women at that time and so it was easier for them to work in science and when it was more like a naturalist kind of of a field but anyway they were still kind of working against society and what was expected of them in a lot of cases and that's really great but i do think it would have been better just to say yeah they worked against society in order to do what they loved, but due to what was going on in their society, like in the larger aspect, they were only able to do it at the expense of other people. And I don't know, I feel like it's important to bring that up in a children's book because children may not know. Because you know as an adult, if you read, oh, this person went to a plantation at this certain period of time, okay, yeah, we probably know what's going on. But kids may not have any idea that it happened. So yeah. That would be like my biggest critique, I think, of the book is although the focus was elsewhere, I do think it's important to give a bit of a bigger picture. And also because when I googled that story afterwards, it did say that Maria did speak out against the way people in slavery were treated, but she still, you know, benefited from it. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, that was just my thought that I had on that. But yeah, other than that, I think most of the stories I did I did really like and like I said before she did a really good job of creating a picture of what was going on in the three girls lives and I, I personally found them very interesting I don't know I did read on some goodreads someone said they didn't think kids would get on with it very well so I don't really have much of a clue about what children like so I don't know but I quite enjoyed it I only knew about Mary Annie to start with so it was really interesting to read about the other two girls and find out about their lives and stuff and also just to hear about the different societies i enjoyed that part too so yeah i thought it was all right and the cover is amazing so five stars for the cover 3.5 stars for the book <laughs> is that harsh nah okay so let's get the board so that was my stem so that got me to this step so my next space is continue on with a series so that's what i'm going to read next however the one after that was supposed to be Instagram pick and I have a feeling I'm not going to get to this point on the board now because I've got other stuff to read for book clubs and stuff like that so yeah I'm thinking actually I'm only going to make it to here. For my series continuation I'm going to read The Girl in the Tower by Catherine Arden and I just started it, um, well I started it last night and I read the prologue and then I fell asleep but I'm on page 22 now, I'm on chapter 3. This is the second book in the Winter Night trilogy, so I can't really talk about it, which is annoying, because I read The Bear and the Nightingale about three years ago, and honestly, I just can't really... I can remember what happens vaguely, and I remember, like, the main points, um, but I can't remember what's a spoiler and what's not a spoiler anymore at this point, so I'm just cautious to say anything at all. But what I will say is that this is set in Russia, it covers some Russian folklore, and it's written in a very, like, mysterious, magical, fairy tale kind of a way, and it's just really good, and it's kind of haunting, like, there's this haunting vibe to the way that she writes. I think I'm definitely going to have to be doing some googling of the first book as I'm reading this one, though, just in the beginning, just to remind myself what happened at the end of the book, but yeah, it's good. Already a folk tale has been told, and it was it was it was a good one so yeah i'm really enjoying this i'm probably reading this with a group of people on discord because chaz is part of that huge channel i will link below and chaz has finished already 
and absolutely loved it. So that's just really excited me for it even more. So this is probably going to be the last book from Tales from Two Trails that I'm going to read this month. Because the other books I'm reading are Jane Eyre, which I'm supposed to be reading for the Bronze Along. And to be honest, this has like completely fallen off my radar a little bit. I don't know why. I was really enjoying it and I am enjoying it. But I'm on page 74 and I don't think that's much further than I was at the end of my last vlog. So yeah, but it is really good. So I do want to pick this back up this week. The other book that I kind of want to finish before the end of February, well, I do need to finish before the end of February, is Shamefully Pirate Hunters by Robert Curson. This book I was reading for the X Book Club last year. And I did read some in January as well. I read a lot in January, actually. And I'm so close to the end. I mean, look at that. But Hannah and I, so Hannah from Hannah's blog, who runs the book club with me, we can finally do the live show for the pirate round. So we're going to be doing that in the last weekend of February. So I need to finish this by the last weekend in February so we can actually do that. Um, I don't know how successful we'll be remembering everything that happened in the two books. But in that video, we'll be discussing this book and also why... We love pirates as well. They're both non-fiction books and so it'll be like completely spoilery about everything that's in them um, and everything like that. But yeah, if you're interested in that then I'll hopefully be updating when we're going to be doing that very soon. But yeah, I'm excited to talk to Hannah about these books because I do have a lot of opinions about these books to be fair. So even though we've dragged our feet with it a bit, well, life's happened so we haven't managed to do the live show yet, I have a lot to say. <laughs> so I'm excited to chat with Hannah about them. The other thing is Little Dorrit. I have read loads of Little Dorrit because I'm loving it. And let me just see what chapter I'm on. See, I've said I've read loads, but it's a really long book, so I probably... We have just not... No, we don't want to hear you. I'm on 57% now, and yeah, I'm really, I'm really enjoying it. I think now it will definitely, like, speed up. My reading pace will speed up with it, so... I'm ahead of mum now, so she's got to catch up. <laughs> just saying. So that's everything that I'm reading, but for this weekend, I'm going to concentrate on The Girl on, in the Tower and Little Dorrit and Pirate Hunters, I think. So I think for this video, those are the three books I'm going to be reading. Anyway, yeah, I hope you guys are doing well. I'm sorry I just talked as my intro for like 20 minutes or something. Um, hopefully I can cut it down. I hope that you guys are all doing well and I will see you in a sec. the end of February well the end of February has been and gone and I have disappointing news to do with my TBR and that is that I didn't manage to finish The Girl in the Tower by Catherine Arden I didn't get very far in fact I don't think I read anything else really I'm on page well I'm on chapter 7 which is page 64 I was enjoying this but I just my brain just couldn't focus anymore towards the end of February and I just kind of gave up on the book to be honest which is a shame and I apologise to all those who I'm buddy reading with it that I kind of yeah I've really dragged my feet with this one. What that means is, is I will have to pick from the punishment pot from Tales with, from Two Trails at the start of April because I said I was going to finish this in my March TBR and then I didn't finish it. <laughs> so yep yeah, there's that. I am hoping to catch back up with this in March because I believe we are carrying on with the buddy read and going to book three so it'd be good to kind of catch up with this in March. Um, I just need to put it down for for now and just move on to something else and come back to it I think because you know once you're in a bit of a rut with one book you can't always move past it you kind of need to a bit of a change and switch it up. So I have actually moved on to my first book on my March TBR for Tales from Two Trails which is Blood of Dragons by Robin Hobb which I'm buddy reading with my stepmom. <laughs> and yeah I've already started really enjoying but I'll talk about that more in my next vlog that I do. So yeah I'm definitely reading which is good but then you know it's a world that I know very well and characters I was going to say that I love but actually there's a lot of characters in here that I want to give a good shake into. <laughs> um but yes anyway and yeah so that's everything I just wanted to say before I go that for what it's worth my thoughts are with those people living in Ukraine those people with family and friends in Ukraine just 
anybody around Ukraine who's probably very terrified right now, I, I'm thinking of everybody involved. And I'm also thinking of those people in Russia who really didn't want any of this to happen and who are shocked and appalled and who they themselves have friends and family in Ukraine and are terrified for them and wanted no part of what's going on. I hope that you guys are all okay and that your friends and family are safe wherever they are. I'm feeling very worried about the situation and for everybody involved. Anyway, yeah, like I say, I hope you guys are doing okay and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.